Right, welcome back to part 2 of Race is Over, What's Next? So I hope that for the past few days after the previous lecture, all of you had a good rest. And previously we learned about passive rest. What happens directly or immediately after your race? We also learned about mental recovery during the passive rest and moving forward in managing your outcome be it a good race that you had or it was a crappy experience you learn about a couple of little tips to how to move forward so today as promised we will be talking a lot more about active rest or what is commonly known as cross training before I go into what really is cross training all about and what are the concepts behind cross training there's a, something that we need to learn first and that's called recovery markers because understanding the concept of recovery markers will decide whether are you ready to start your period of active rest now generally when it talk, when we come to recovery markers the elite athletes use a series of blood markers sent to the lab to monitor their recovery status such approach is actually not feasible to most non-competitive athletes because these tests are actually very expensive and very tedious so for the day-to-day -day runner what you can do is you can engage in two factors to gauge your recovery number one is what we call domes or the delay onset of muscle soreness and number two will be your RHR resting heart rate now the delay onset of muscle soreness is simply how sore you are lah. So if your muscle soreness is so bad that your activities of daily living such as walking on flat ground, climbing up and down the stairs, sprinting to catch a bus, you can feel the soreness so bad that when you are moving, you're moving like a penguin, that shows that your recovery is still far from optimal. As for resting heart rate, what you'll be looking at is how much higher or is it the same as per your heart rate in your non uh, in your non racing period so what you can do is you lie down on your bed first thing when you wake up take your heart rate for 15 seconds and multiply that by 4 if it is about 5 to 10 beats higher than your regular resting heart rate chances are you're not well rested yet so these two are very feasible and very practical factors you can use to monitor your recovery from stress previously we talked about phase one which is the passive recovery so now we enter phase two or your active recovery this active recovery phase or this active rest phase can last for as much as about 10 days for half marathoners finishers to as many as 21 days for those who did the 42.195 now you must bear in mind that during this period of active rest you would still face a little bit of domes there would still be some sort a pinch or two of muscle soreness but it should not stop you from engaging in light crossing training light cross training sorry end of the day as long as you are walking fine you are not climbing the stairs like a penguin you don't feel like suddenly overnight you're 80 or 90 years old you're pretty much ready to start cross training for your active rest also during this period of active rest during phase 2 you can start doing what I call heat treatment using heat such as muscle rubs or hot packs to actually help relieve your muscle soreness and increase your blood circulation for recovery lah. I find that a lot of people don't quite understand what is the intensity as well to use as well as what is the purpose of cross training at the end of the day cross training allows you to maintain your aerobic fitness yet minimizing the stress on the predominant muscles that's used in running the trick about cross training is to be able to use a suitable intensity for that period and the intensity to engage is very much dependent on your goal in this period that we are looking at your post event recovery your cross training shouldn't be engaged at a very high intensity we are probably looking at about 60 to 70 percent max heart rate 
But once come your training season, when you start preparing again for your event and you dedicate one probably one session a week to cross training, your intensity will be higher now because right now the usage of cross training is really to start contributing to the build up of your cardiovascular fitness. So in the training phase, your cross training intensity should hover between 70 to 80% of your max heart rate. But right now, since this is the recovery phase, we'll be looking at something lower. As I said earlier, 60 to 70% of your max heart rate. So what are the types of cross training and how do we really differentiate this type? Are there really any differences among the different types of cross training? Definitely yes. Looking at a scale from right to left, we have what we call non-weight bearing, non-impactful cross training. These are activities that whereby you don't carry your own weight and that there is no force impact to your muscles and such as cycling, swimming or aqua jogging. On the extreme left scale, we have what we call full weight bearing, full impactful activities. Your running, your stair climbing, circuit training, etc. And of course, your in-between weight bearing but non-impactful, your elliptical trainer, your stair masters, the devices that you use in the gym. As you can see, the stress to the muscle will actually stretch from right to left. Non-weight bearing, non-impactful activities has the minimum has minimal stress on muscle, whereas full weight bearing, full impactful exercises has the most stress to your muscles. So as you approach this period of active rest, your cross training, you would start off from right to left. Use non-weight bearing, non-impact activities, gradually add in some weight bearing and finally gradually transit into full weight bearing, full impact activity. And this is a sample recovery program for the post-marathon period. We start off with very easy, the first week which is actually this week. Um, very easy activities, your swimming, your stationary cycling. And you can see the duration is kept short probably about 30 minutes. Then by week two, you started to have some light jogging, some stationary cycling, week three, circuit training, your weight bearing, full impact, and finally about 30 to 40 minutes of light jogging. It is a gradual build up of intensity and stress exposed to the muscle again. So that pretty much sums up the entire concept of cross training. It's not really that difficult to understand. Just know that now this period, because you're recovering, your cross training is engaged at a lower intensity, number one. And number two, start first by using non-impactful, non-weight bearing activities like swimming and cycling. Now, um, the next lecture, the next um, talk will be a week later because um, I'll be away for the next couple of days until Sunday. Oh, well, it's time I take a break from all this, isn't it? Um, in the next lecture, which will probably on Sunday, release on Sunday the 15th, I hope, um, I'm going to talk to you about the importance of goal setting for your running year ahead. Um, why is it you need to plan? You don't just, oh, there's so many events, I take part in the event every week, that will not be optimal. And how do you plan your goal? In corporate training, in life coaching, they always teach you the smart way. But yet in running, there is something better. And I call it the smarter way of planning your running goal. So all this and more in the next session. And of course, uh, for those who of you who might not be aware, the registration for Twilight Ultra Challenge 2014 is now open. Um, early bird registration closes on the 31st December. So if you've done this race before, this is actually Running Guild's very first race way back in 2011. Next year will actually be our fourth edition. Um, you have 16 hours from 7 p.m. Saturday 29th March to 11 a.m. 30th March Sunday to run as many loops of 10 km as you want. Uh, if you have read reviews on this past event, you would know that it's actually kept small and cozy so that all the runners will really enjoy the race experience. So take advantage of the early bird registration period right now before we 
before the price resume back to normal after the 31st of December. Um, registration can be done on the website stated there, www.twilightultrachallenge.com. Right, so thank you very much once again. I'll see you next week for session three.